change channels. The main channel was being messed with. So I'll go ahead and try to start on this channel and go from there. Change channels. Try something. One moment. <clears throat> okay, I'll go ahead and get started. <clears throat> All right. Okay, let's do it. Hey, show one, brother. Obadiah, you're walking on. And beloved brother from uh, Vegas. Hey, Shalom, Malak. Shalom, beloved. Call Lime Lime, how about Shimmy How Shy? By Shimmy Kakadash, Baraka Thumb. Okay, through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shim, Yahweh Shy. I'm going to go ahead and bring out this lesson. Holy Spirit jumped on me today, and there's a cup, cup, <clears throat> excuse me. There's a couple of videos that I watched today. Well, one of them was yesterday, and that was the um, after camp class that Elder Apostle Tahar did. And then there was another lesson that I watched, the beloved brother Karatazak out of uh, Las Vegas. The beloved elder Karatazak out of Las Vegas did a response lesson to Elder Apostle Tahar's lesson. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into this lesson, being attentive to the signs of the times. One moment. Shalom. Barak Thang Yahweh. Barak Thang Yahweh Shai. Barak Thang Yahweh. Barak Thang Yahweh Shai. Call Halayim La Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Bahashem Rakhak Dash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that is scattered abroad in double honor and respect to the elders, to the apostles of Great Millstone. <coughs> Coming back up to you with another lesson be attentive to the signs of the times. So the topic of discussion that Elder Apostle Tahar went into, followed by a response lesson by the beloved Elder Karatazak out of Las Vegas. The chariots of the Lord, <coughs> the so-called UFOs being on the scene, to deliver the Lord's elect to deliver the children of Israel. So these chariots in itself represent a sign. And the other part of that is that the Most High does not change. So we can see a pattern through the Holy Spirit of returning to deliver his people. So I wanna go here first. <clears throat> 
Let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 68, verse 17. <clears throat> the book of Psalms, chapter 68, verse 17. Let's read this verse. Psalms 104, verse 3. Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind. So the ancient men, when they saw these vessels, described them to the best of their ability, using basic terminology. So these vessels have or make flight. So in the eyes of King David, John on the island of Patmos, they walk upon the wings of the wind, which means they fly, they fly, they have flight. So they didn't have airplanes back then. So they couldn't say, well, I saw a airplane or I saw a jet or whatever the case may be. So these are the so-called UFOs that have the ability to take flight. And they lay up their beams upon the waters. So they emit an array of different lights across the light spectrum. Blue, yellow, amber, red, which gives them the appearance of a rainbow the closer they draw to the Earth's surface. But from a distance, it just looks like a glowing orb or light bulb. A glowing orb. Let's read this. <clears throat> Be attentive to the signs of the times. <clears throat> Psalms 68 or 17. The chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them as in Sinai, in the holy place. So these are not little green men from Mars. They're so-called dark-skinned men with woolly hair that Ezekiel saw in Ezekiel chapter 1. So Sinai, who was on the scene at Mount Sinai? Moses and the congregation of Israel. So the Lord does not change, <clears throat> but he owns time, sequence, and the dividing of times, or eons, ages. So we don't know when the Most High is going to strike. We can get a general sense of the signs of the times, but we don't know his precise strike times. Let's read that again. The chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them as in Sinai, in the holy place. See, well, let's get a precept to Sinai because through thy precepts, I get understanding. Shalom, Bala, Malak, Ariyatra, Ayah, Deuteronomy 33 and 1. And this is the blessing wherewith Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel before his death. And he said, the Lord came from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran and he came with 10,000 of saints from his right hand when a fury law for them. See? So Mount Sinai, Moses is there. And the congregation of Israel or the congregation of the saints. Deuteronomy 33 and 3. Yea, he loved the people. All his saints are in thy hand. And they sat down at thy feet. Everyone shall receive of thy words. So the elect are receiving this message in the last days. See that? So the Lord is just using the same playbook because he does not change. 
Psalm 68 and 17. Thou has ascended on high. Thou has led captivity captive. Thou has received gifts from men. Yea, for the rebellious also, that the Lord God might dwell among them. See? So these are signs, indicators, that salvation is drawing nigh, which means close. Yup, Revelation 11 and 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. See? So he's using the same playbook that he used in the days of Pharaoh, the days of Moses, which is Peter, which is Jacob, which is David. See that? So instant replay is real. Reincarnation is real. So he's coming back as in Mount Sinai with the host of heaven, the so-called UFOs or the angels of the Lord. Yup, shalom, beloved brother, Gabar Yash. Romans 13 and 11. And that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. So this is speaking to the relevant generation of the congregation that was present when these miracles were performed. So this is the time of the season of that generation that's being nurtured. Let's go here. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 4. And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. And that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. Woo! So that Cephas is the rock, the rock or Peter. If I'm not mistaken, uh, Petra, Peter, or that rock. See? So this is an order that we can see unravel. Just like Moses receiving the law and seeing the wonders, the miracles, the signs. See? First Peter 15 and 5. And that was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are falling asleep. Woo! Goodness gracious. See? So we're seeing how the Lord is operating through his men and building an orderly arrangement or a governorship in order. 1 Corinthians 15 and 5 again. And that he was seen of Cephas, then of the 12. After that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. So the elect can see the oracles, the visions, the signs of the times. But the rest are blinded by Peter when he was David and prayed for the table to become a snare unto them. The rebels that were murmuring under Moses, which is Peter, which is David. <coughs> First Corinthians 15 and 7. After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. So Paul, full of knowledge and understanding, is back helping to teach the congregation 
and to unveil some of the mysteries of the scriptures. Paul is more wise than Peter, but Peter was chosen from the Most High to be the head apostle. Let's go here to Wisdom of Solomon 10. But wisdom delivered from pain those that attended upon her. When the righteous fled from his brother's wrath, she guided him in right paths, showed him the kingdom of God, and gave him knowledge of holy things, made him rich in his travels, and multiplied the fruit of his labors. So Jacob is shown the prophecies in the revelations. With Jacob is Peter, which is King David. You see the pattern here. Fleeing from the persecution of Esau, Edom. Wisdom of Solomon, let's go to Wisdom of Solomon 10 and 16. She entered into the soul of the servant of the Lord and withstood dreadful kings and wonders and signs. Yep. Rendered to the righteous a reward. Wait a minute. See, wonders and signs. Jacob saw wonders and signs. Peter saw wonders and signs. So did King David and who else? Moses. I know you see the pattern, how the Most High is operating here. Brother Gabar Ayash, Matthew 16, verse 17. And Yahweh Shine answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So that church is being built now. You think it's a coincidence that the Bill Gates of hell is trying to come against this rebuilding of the Lord's temple? That's not a coincidence. There was no such thing as an accident or coincidence. Matthew 16 and 19, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. So we're seeing a repeat of the days of old. So it's high time to awake out of sleep. Well, let's go back to that. 1 Corinthians 15 and 6. After that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present but some are fallen asleep. So the election have the oracles, the eyes to see. But there is a two-third remnant, I mean a two-third house of rebels that are contrary to the elect remnant, that are still asleep. See, let's go back to Wisdom of Solomon 10, verse 17. Rendered to the righteous a reward of their labor, guided them in a marvelous way and was unto them for a cover by day and a light of stars in the night season. Who was present when the chariots were a cover by day or a cloud by day and a fire by night? So Moses saw this. You see that? So even King David, read, I wrote it in my notes, read, somebody post Psalm 68 and 13. Psalm 68 and 13, please. And Psalms 91 and 4. So remember the chariots are arriving 
as in Sinai. That Moses saw, that the congregation saw, and they were delivered under Moses and that congregation. Wisdom of Solomon 10 or 17. Rendered to the righteous a reward of their labors, girded them in a marvelous way, and was unto them for a cover by day and a light of stars in the night season. So these are chariots of the Lord. They appear to be starlights. So the difference is they're not stagnant or stationary. When you see that glowing orb in the sky, they're mobile, they're, they're, they move, just like the uh, wise men saw when young baby Yahweh Shai was born. So these are mobile orbs or mobile lights, stars, which you could use, where well, you think we get the term starship? Where do you think we get the term starship? See, the beloved brother beyond Yasharala, Psalm 68 and 13. Though ye have leaned among the pots, ye shall be as the wings of a dove covered with silver and her feathers with yellow gold. That's the chariot right there. See, these are not birds flying around with decked out with bling bling gold and silver. That would be too heavy for their feathers and their small bodies. And birds got hollow bones. So that's the chariot, as in Sinai, that we read in Deuteronomy 33, verse 1 and 2, and Psalm 68, verse 17. See that? That's that covering. Wow. Yep. 2 Ezra 13 and 6. But I beheld, and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain and flew upon it. So this chariot, the great fathership, is going to look like a mountainside cracking the clouds, cracking the skies, and is going to cover the circumference of the earth. So these chariots are decked out with gold and silver. Whoever seen a star that fell from heaven lay on the ground up close and personal here on earth. It, okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye, 1968, sayonara. If the scriptures don't resonate in you, this is not for you. All right, let's go back. Wisdom of Solomon 10. See, so Moses is, there's a persistent theme. Moses, Peter. Jacob, Wisdom of Solomon 10, verse 18, brought them through the Red Sea and led them through much water. But she drowned their enemies and cast them up out of the bottom of the deep. So the modern day flood is going to be that lake of fire from these nuclear missiles. That's going to create the modern day flood, the modern day sea of destruction. See? So that's death being swallowed up, the enemies of Israel, which starts with Esau Edom. He is as death and cannot be satisfied, pursuant to Habakkuk 2. See? Brother GMS, Western North Carolina. Shalom, Balaam, Malak, Barakathah. Isaiah 25 and 8, he will swallow up death in victory and the Lord God will wipe away tears from of all faces and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from of all the earth for the Lord has spoken it. So what has been will be again and there is no new thing under the sun. So the enemies of Israel is going to be drowned in the lake of sea, in the lake of fire, which is a sea of hot molten lava because the elements are going to melt with fervent heat. 
and the heavens is going to pass away with a great noise. Nuclear destruction. So it's going to create a hot lava lake effect. No different from the old days, the enemies of Israel being drowned by the sea. So a sea of fire is getting ready to consume the earth, starting with the daughter of Babylon. That's right. Boom. Beautiful. That's the last noise the caveman is going to hear before he go and descend into the valley of the dry bones. See, wisdom of Solomon 10 and 18 brought them through the Red Sea and led them through much water. Somebody get that please in Isaiah 24 that we shall sing aloud when we see the destruction. It's Isaiah 24 towards the bottom, please. Yup, Shalom Bilal Malat, Azan Ha'amah, Exodus 19 and 20. And the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mount. And the Lord called Moses up to the top of the mount, and Moses went up. The chariots are returning as in Mount Sinai. Well, let's go here. Let's go here. Let's go to Acts 1. The book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 9. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Who was present to see this? That chariot take up Yahweh Shai. Let's keep going. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Angels stood beside them, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Yahweh Shai, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go up into heaven. Who was there? Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. Watch this. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Aliphas, and Simon, Zelotes, and Judas the brother of James. See, Peter which is Cephas, which is Moses, which is Jacob. See that? Let's go back to that. So, in like manner as ye have seen him go up. Brother Ha'amath, Brother Azan Ha'amath, Exodus 19, let's go to verse 18. And Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. Woo! And the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mount quaked greatly. See that? So Moses was present. And when Shai was taken up in the chariot, Peter was present, which is Moses. If a Negro can't get it, we're moving on. Let's go here to Brother Gabar Ayash. Isaiah 24 and 14. They shall lift up their voice. They shall sing for the majesty of the Lord. They shall cry aloud from the sea. See? So there's going to be a sea of fire. But the chariots are going to take up the elect. Somebody posts Psalms 124 six through eight. So there be some standing here which shall not taste of death. Let's go back to when Yahweh Shai was taken up in a chariot, a so-called UFO. Acts 1, verse 11, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? Show that spirit's messing with me. 
which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Yahweh Shai, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go up into heaven. The chariot, let's jump back down to who was present. Acts 1 and 13. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Peter and Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, the son of Aliphas, and Simon, Zelotes, and Judas, the brother of James. See? So the Lord does not change his playbook. I know you see it. Just made you a moderator, beloved brother. Yeah. Uh-huh. Beautiful. Brother GMS, Western North Carolina. First Chronicles 16 and 34. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endure forever. And say ye, save us, O God of our salvation, and gather us together and deliver us from the heathen that we may give thanks to thy holy name and glory in thy praise. There be some standing here which shall not taste of death. So King David was told to go over by the mulberry trees where the chariots descended. Let's do a keyword search mulberry trees. So we can look in 2 Samuel chapter 6 and read Isaiah 37, verse 35 through 37, and 2 Samuel 5, 23 through 25. Let's go here. Where is that? Psalms 124, verse 6 through 8. Yep. The beloved Malak, Gabar Ayash. Psalms 124, verse 6. Blessed be the Lord who have not given us as a prey to their teeth. So there is an elect of the house of David in their order that are being delivered, followed by the remnant of the house of Israel. Psalms 124, verse 7. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. See? So the elect... There is a spiritual hedge of protection around, around the Lord's sanctuary. You think he's going to let his temple be destroyed that he worked so fervently and feverishly to build? Hell no, he ain't going to let you destroy his temple, caveman. So he's going to preserve his temple, the third temple that's being built, that he had made in great labor, diligence, that's been tried and tested age over tribulation and temptations. Psalms 124 and 8. Our help is in the name of the Lord who hath made heaven and earth. See that? I know you see it. So we can read about these deliverances in Isaiah 37, 35 through 37. So, uh, 2 Samuel 5, 23 through 25. No need to make this long. Let's read two more. It's going to seal the lesson. Let's go to, uh, here's another clue for us students. So we're students in this thing, which, it, which means disciples. Let's go to Hosea, Hosea 1 and 7. But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah and will save them by the Lord their God and will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, by horses, nor by horsemen. Somebody post Psalms 44, verse 6 and 7. Psalms 44, verse 6 and 7. Bubukasha, which means please. Then we'll close out. Let's read this again. Hosea 1, verse 7. But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah and will save them by the Lord, their power, and will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, by horses, nor by horsemen. So who said this? Let's go to King David, 
which is Peter, which is Moses. Brother Buyan, Yashirwala, Shalawan, beloved. Barakatha, Psalms 44 and 6. For I will not trust in my bow, neither shall my sword save me. Mm, 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 mm. But thou hast saved us from our enemies and has put them to shame that hated us. It's too much. It's too much. And if a Negro can't get it, we're moving on. I think that was a famous quote by the beloved elder Yaikwa. Yep, so the water Yahweh by Shimmy Havashai for amazing teachers led by the Spirit or moved by the Spirit of the Lord. Yahweh by Shimmy Havashai. See? So that lines up beautifully with Hosea 1 and 7. Let's read it again. Psalms 44 and 6. For I will not trust in my bow, neither shall my sword save me. But thou hast saved us from our enemies and hast put them to shame that hated us. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, or Kwakadosh. Double honor and respect to the beloved apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much love, honor, and respect to the beloved elders and the men on the hopeful elect of the house of Israel, helping to edify the body and feed the lambs of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, daily. All right, all men supposed to be laboring with seal, with shield, helmet, and body armor, which means clothed in the full doctrine. Anybody is not helping with us is not with us. All right, regardless of how much feelings we have. Going back to the beloved Apostle Gabars, who made this a famous number one hit song. Feelings, talking about feelings, made that a number one hit. <laughs> we got to get out of our emotions. If a Negro ain't with it, then he's not with us. So hopefully this has been edifying and worth the time. The Holy Spirit came on me to go ahead and put this together. And once again, the water Yahweh by Shem, the water Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. We're diligent laborers in this troop. So we all supposed to be suited up with a helmet and sword and shield and body armor. The full doctrinal truth. Brother Gabar Yash, 2nd Ezra 13 and 9. And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand nor held sword nor an instrument of war. But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire and out of his lips a flaming breath and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests. See, so we're saved by the right arm or the power of the Most High, which is the word of Yahweh. That's that breath and wisdom. So he's not going to have to come down here and do some. Well, ah, yeah, yeah. No, it's the power of the eternal image and glory of Yahweh, which is a spitting image of the Most High, which is Yahweh Shai. So he's not going to be throwing spears and rocks and shooting bows and arrows or coming down here putting hands on people. That's bugged out. <laughs> All right. Hopefully this has been edifying. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Kwam Yasharala. Kwam Yasharala. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. And the five, the ball. Boom! That's the last sound you're going to hear, caveman, before you enter into the valley of the dry bones, the valley of the graves, and to the caves from which you came, you red savage. Shalom. Love you. Maraka Thumb. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Shalom.